now available in paperback and e-readers, E-Steam Ascension, the Devil's Depot, which is a turning point in the life of this powerful E-Steam series story. Get E-Steam Ascension at online booksellers today. You've often heard me say in numerous videos, those who control the money control the media, and those who control the media control the narrative. And this is very dangerous when it comes down to white people, Jewish people, and non-black people controlling the media as it relates to the image of black people. And one example of this that is really disturbing is a new cartoon created by Matt Burnett and Ben Levin called Craig of the Creek. Now, some of the imagery in this cartoon, which is directed towards kids on Cartoon Network, is extremely disturbing. And I'm going to try to show you in a couple of clips how some of this imagery and how some of the points in the pilot are negative in their perception of black people and how these images are quite troubling. <sighs> Finally, we're home! <laughs> now this opening sequence of Craig of the Creek's pilot features several troubling images as related to black male and black female relationships. And with this sequence, we see Craig and his sister coming home from school. Now, Craig's sister is shown as someone who is well-mannered and polite and really kind, whereas Craig is shown as being emotional and being very hyperactive. And he literally bowls over his sister to run up the stairs to his room. And what this sequence is trying to illustrate is the thought that black men do not care about black women and do not regard black women at all. And this is a sequence that was literally, as I see it, shot from the perspective of an outsider looking in, someone who does not understand black male or black female relations, and they decided to present this and show it as a form of two siblings, but they were under in the undertones trying to make a statement about black men and black women and they came from their perspective of the black experience and not our perspective of the black experience. Now one of the most disturbing sequences in this Craig of the Creek cartoon are the ones where Craig suits up for his adventures. And these sequences are so disturbing that they can only be seen in order to be believed. Hoodie armor! With level 7 protection against thorns! And first got a warning. If you take a look at that clip of Craig as he's changing his clothes from his school clothes to his house clothes, you'll notice that Craig, after putting on his hoodie, makes his voice go up an octave to sound like a female. And then after making his voice go up an octave to sound like a female, he then caresses his breasts in the same way that a woman would caress her breasts. And this type of imagery is meant to emasculate black men and it's meant to try to socially engineer a way to effeminize black men and make it socially acceptable for a black male to believe that acting effeminate is normal. Now you compare this image of Craig of the Creek to a Fat Albert or other cartoon that features African Americans like Static Shock and you don't see the male characters acting this way. And the reason why you don't see the male characters acting that way is because black men like Dwayne McDuffie and Bill Cosby, who are heterosexual, are trying to present a positive image of black manhood and black masculinity to young black boys who would watch this cartoon. However, the two white and Jewish men who created this Craig of the Creek, they're trying to push a narrative as related that's negative to black men, and that narrative is meant to try to effeminize this black boy through this image of this character and promote an effeminate image as a social norm to black boys and being effeminate as socially acceptable to black boys and make it look like this is something that is socially normal. Now boys who grew up with their fathers and boys who grew up around men, we understand that this type of image is destructive to young black boys and for them to see this day in and day out would be detrimental to their upbringing because it's going to tell them that it's socially acceptable to practice in dysfunctional feminine behaviors. Now I have another clip further on in this in this um, 
analysis that I want you to take a look at that reinforces this argument, and it's coming up now. The perks of holding for holding stuff like this thing. I can see behind myself. Cool. Now, this clip is extremely disturbing. And the reason why it's extremely disturbing is because we have a young black boy taking a purse off his shelf. And a purse is something that women carry things in. And he calls it the purse of holding. Again, this is an image designed to socially engineer the whole concept that feminine things are okay for young boys. And as he puts this so-called purse of holding on, we notice the way he poses with that purse is the same way a woman poses with her purse, showing her backside to the, to the viewer. And showing us her ba his backside in the same way that a female would show us her backside. This, again, is meant to promote and socially engineer the idea that female behavior is acceptable for young black boys and that it's okay to act just like a female. The whole point of this whole sequence is designed to socially engineer in a young boy's mind that acting like a female is perfectly fine for a young heterosexual black male. This image is one of the most dangerous images I have ever seen in a cartoon or any form of media because this is an image designed and pointed at children. Now, as this clip goes on, we see as he opens up the purse of holding, he decides to take out a compact and calls it this thing. And this, again, is socially engineering the whole idea that this boy is going to socially engineer feminine concepts to young black boys. And this is what's really dangerous about this cartoon, is that it promotes a lot of feminine ideas in these clips. And this is just the opening start of this show's pilot. You're promoting all these feminine concepts. So this boy holding a purse, this boy posing like a female, showing his backside to the viewer. And then you have this boy then taking out a compact, talking about it's something that he sees behind himself. Now, if this show was produced by black men, this boy would have more masculine items that he would be taking on his adventures. I mean, why couldn't this boy have a backpack of holding? Why couldn't he have a messenger bag of holding? These are things associated that boys know to use that are masculine. Why couldn't he have a tactical flashlight or a mirror of some sort or some old cell phone that he could use to see behind himself. These are all items that boys usually take when they go out exploring. These are things related to masculinity. However, because these two producers have a, an agenda and want to push a narrative to effeminize and emasculate black men with this cartoon, they decided they wanted to put in imagery that was reflective of the narrative they wanted to push because they wanted to degrade the African-American male image and present an image that they felt comfortable with, one that made them feel better about being white people and promoted white supremacist ideals about black people and don't tell our story from a fair and balanced perspective. Now, this next clip presents several images that are extremely troubling. And I know many African-American women who watch my channel are going to get extremely disturbed and upset about the images presented to them in this clip. So I'm warning you ahead before you continue to push play on this video. You're ashamed of? What's behind your back? Uh, nothing. What's behind your back? Uh, my girlfriend? Hi, Craig. We're working on a science project. When you're older like me, you'll realize there are more important things in life, like love and homework. Bye, Craig. Now, in this clip, we have the Craig character being asked by his brother what he's hiding behind his back. And while Craig is hiding his staff that he imagines with, 
He then retorts, what is the brother hiding behind his back? And then out from behind the brother's back pops this white female. And this, again, is meant to promote white supremacy's idea that black men need to hide their interracial relationships with white women, and also meant to promote the idea to white girls that they have to hide their interracial relationships with black men, like it's some sort of secret taboo. And this is what the producers of this show are trying to push with this whole sequence right here. Now, when it comes down to this sequence, it's really disturbing because, again, it promotes an old racist stereotype that it is wrong for black men to pursue relationships with white women and white women to pursue relationships with black men. However, in most other media, like your CW shows, like Legends of Tomorrow and The Flash, it show, you can show black women having relationships with white men, and no one has a problem with that. However, black males are socially engineered in media and told from day one not to have relationships with white women, and if they do, they have to do it in secret. Now, Craig's brother is a contrast to Craig, if you look at these images. Now, Craig expresses his feminine behaviors outwardly, but looks masculine, but then Craig's brother has an effeminate hairstyle and almost looks feminine himself outwardly. Again, this is all about promoting a narrative regarding black men through images and using these images and media to promote a narrative to black men. And with this media targeted at young black boys, this type of television show is extremely dangerous for these young boys to watch because this type of content really promotes negative images and promotes them as social norms. And when you're promoting negative behavior as social norms, it's very destructive to black boys who are growing up to become black men. Now this next clip in Craig of the Creek promotes an old stereotype regarding black men. And if you live in inner city neighborhoods like I do here in the South Bronx, you have seen this stereotype promoted quite a bit around the neighborhood by some black men in the neighborhood. I'm going to let you take a look at the clip to see the stereotype presented on screen in this cartoon. Let's go. Forget your shoes. Just run. Now, if you live in the inner city, you would have caught the stereotype in what that white girl said. And for those of you who don't understand what stereotype was presented in that sequence, I'm going to explain it to you. Now, when it comes down to many black teenage boys and black preteen boys, they are taught to make every effort to keep their sneakers clean. And this is why Craig was stepping so funny when he walked into that sewer, because this is something many boys in the inner city try to do when they're trying to keep their sneakers white when they're walking around. And this is why he was stepping sideways and stepping funny. And as this sequence went on and they got terrified by the kids in the sewer, he was still trying to make efforts to try to keep his sneakers clean. And then the little white girl tells him to forget his shoes. And the reason why she was telling him to do that was because he was putting the value of his sneakers above his own safety. And this is something that many poor African-American boys do in inner city neighborhoods. They're willing to literally fight to the death over these sneakers. And they're willing to do anything to fight anyone who even steps on those sneakers. And this breathes brand new life into an old stereotype regarding black teenage boys and young black men and how they value sneakers over their intangibles of manhood and how they're willing to sacrifice things related to their intangibles of manhood just to have a clean pair of white sneakers. When I look at this Craig of the Creek pilot, I see all the reasons why black people have to create their own media because when someone else is using their money to create media, they are going to create a narrative that they feel comfortable with. And it's clear to me that the producers of this cartoon 
feel comfortable with producing a cartoon that promotes stereotypes and narratives that are detrimental to black people. Because when I look at this cartoon, it is promoting several agendas that are extremely destructive to black people. And the first one I saw was the lack of respect for black females and the way black male-female relations are supposed to be. Because we saw the sister marginalized and minimized, and then we saw the boy literally stepping over her like she was nothing. The second thing we saw was the social engineering of the effeminization of black men, and that was done in several of the sequences where this Craig suited up for his adventure. Him holding his breasts like a woman and carrying a purse would not have ever passed muster with either the late Dwayne McDuffie or Bill Cosby. Both of those men would have shut that down almost immediately because they, as responsible black men, would not allow this to be promoted as a social norm to young black boys because both of those men understood the value of these cartoons and that they would be seen not only by kids of this generation but generations to come and this would be their way of learning about being black and learning about black culture because they understood that these images have a resonance with young black boys and they have a resonance with promoting ideas about young black boys but these white producers don't understand how image reflects black in black people and black culture so they're going to promote uh, these effeminized images in their media the other thing that Dwayne McDuffie and Bill Cosby probably wouldn't have stood for I mean well Bill Cosby wouldn't have stood for it because with Dwayne McDuffie on Static Shock we did see Virgil trying to pursue Frida in the first season but we wouldn't have seen this promotion of this swirling like they did with the brother and the way they promoted it was really racist. At least in Static Shock, we saw Virgil openly trying to pursue Frida, but not like this character, the brother who was shown hiding his relationship with this white girl. And the whole idea of promoting this in a time where black male and female relations are at extreme tensions is not a good thing because it promotes, again, a negative idea that black men and black women don't get along. And that is shown originally in the first clip, and it's also shown here that black men have no respect, and this is the culture that they're taught further on in the culture, and it's promoted as a mainstream social norm that black men have no respect for black women, and they have so little respect that they pursue women of other races above their own women, and that's promoted in this cartoon as well. And the other third thing of the stereotypes that we saw especially those with those sneakers. That was a really racist stereotype slipped in insidiously in this cartoon. I believe if this cartoon were produced by a black person, we would have gotten a completely different story about a young black boy. Now, there is a market, as I see it, for this type of cartoon, but it's about who produces that cartoon. A cartoon about a black boy using his imagination, going out exploring. That could be a great cartoon. However, that story needs to be told by a black man so that we can get some perspective on black culture and the black experience from a black man's perspective because the world is completely different for a black man than it is a white man, a white woman, a black woman, or any other foreign nationality. And the only person who I see can tell the story about a black man is another black man. And that was something I saw in an episode of Static Shot where we saw the Virgil character after he ran from the police. And that was only a story a black man could tell from our experience. That was only a story we could tell from our perspective of growing up. Another story they had on Static Shock featured Richie's father, who was a racist. And again, that was another story that could only be told from a black male perspective because that comes from the experience of being a black man. So when I look at these Craigs of the Creek, again, I see a piece of 
media that was designed by white people for white people that presents the image of black people they want to see, not how we see ourselves or tells our story. So we need to go out and tell our own stories and all the tools are there for us to tell our own stories on things like a YouTube, a Vimeo, or Daily Motion, or any of these other streaming services out here where we can create our own platform, or we can just go out and create our own platform to create our own media. We cannot go out here and continue to support media like this because this media does not present us in a balanced and humanized perspective. This is one of the reasons why I go out of my way to publish books on my SJS Direct Publishing imprint because when I look at media like this, it does not give us that balanced, humanized image of black people, and it doesn't tell our story from our experience. This is what happens when a white person tells our story. However, when a black man tells our story, we get a completely different picture, and we get a completely different view of the world, and we get a narrative that humanizes black people and shows us what's great about them and shows us what's great about our experiences growing up as young black boys and young black girls and we get a clear picture of who we are and not a picture based on what someone else wants to see of us. When I look at this Craig of the Creek, this is a cartoon made by white people about black people for white people, not a cartoon about us made by us for us and the rest of the world to show the rest of the world who we really are. If you'd like to try some of my SJS Direct publications, you may do so by clicking the link to Amazon.com. I have several positive books for African American children like the Isis series and the East Team series and other books for teens and tweens like the Spinsterella Trilogy and the Thetas. And if you want to see me make more videos like this, you can donate to my Patreon by clicking the link in the description box. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe.